Hi everyone, I'm Irene. You're watching Perpetually Paperback, and today I'm going to be doing a review on Silvia Moreno Garcia's Velvet Was the Night. So I'll put the book up in the corner so I don't have to hold it the whole time. But basically, with this book, in this book, we're going to follow two people, Elvis and Maite. And this is a very noir book. Um, I talked about it in my wrap up quite a bit, actually, but noir is a genre that is not going to be for everyone. I think a lot of people went into this thinking it was gonna be like Mexican Gothic, and let me say from the very get-go, it is not. It is nothing like that. Um, Moreno Garcia has, she shifts genres a lot in her writing. So for example, Mexican Gothic was a Gothic thriller. This is a noir thriller, I would say. We are following these two people who we can very much call anti-heroes. There's nothing really great about them and there's no real reason to follow them. They're kind of not the best people in society. Maite works as a secretary in a legal office and she's very disillusioned with her life. She loves to read romance, uh, like soap opera, graphic novels, and that's how she like creates these fantasies of a life that she would rather lead. And then on the other side, we're getting Elvis's story. Elvis is, let's go with a street rat. He has come up in a group called the Hawks and they are run by a gentleman named El Mago. The translation for El Mago is like the wizard. So this is the person that kind of runs the underbelly of Mexico City. I should start with, I'm sorry, it's set in 1960s, um, like late 69, 70s in Mexico City. And the reason I say a specific time is because it is actually based on a real event that took place in Mexico City. In the 60s um, and early 70s in Mexico City, in a lot of the world actually, there was a big uh, red scare going on. And so the Hawks were a group that were created to seek out communist insurrectionists or communist sympathizers, specifically with college students who were kind of incensed at that time. And there was a lot of protests stemming from them. So the Hawks were a group that was trained by the CIA to quell those leanings. Elvis is one of the people in that group. And there's a big event that starts out the beginning of the story where there is a uh, protest by college students taking place where the Hawks are sent in to disrupt and sort of beat up the students. There's this other government um, agent that basically is there to uncover that, that whole plot. Um, and in this, we're searching for a group of pictures. Now those pictures, or the reason that we're, the way that we're tying everyone in, Maite lives in a building and across from her lives this girl named Leonora. She is a person that Maite really envies. And when she gets the opportunity to have, to watch her cat in her apartment, she jumps on that. A couple days later, we basically come to find that Leonora has gone missing. So now Maite is out of money and stuck with a cat in an apartment. She then begins to look for her. On the other side, we've got Elvis, who also is looking for, for Leonora because she is the person that is thought to have pictures of the event that took place incriminating the Hawks. So they need to make sure that they get those pictures. Maite is just helping find Leonora, mostly because it's more interesting than the life she leads, and she also wants her money. But her intentions are less than good. It's mostly selfish. She ends up sort of working with a boy who was a past lover of Leonora's, and she, because she wants her life so much, she starts to grab on to all of these people. Elvis, on the other hand, starts to monitor or uh, puts Maite under surveillance and he kind of becomes infatuated with her. They're very similar in their likes. They share some of the same books. They like a lot of the same music and he becomes infatuated with her. As the story progresses, they start to kind of come together as their search continues. And then we come to a climax where you probably could have seen the climax coming, but honestly, I liked it. I thought it ended really well. Um, I was a fan of this book. The reading experience was a little bit slower than I would have liked. It definitely was not Mexican Gothic. However, I knew it was a noir thriller going in and was expecting that. For me, it was three and a half stars. It wasn't my favorite of hers, but ultimately I did enjoy it. Um, I, I am not a huge fan of the noir genre, but I thought because it was based on a, I like 
history. Um, and honestly, it was about a time that I knew very little about. I know not that much about Mexico City, especially in the 60s. Um, another good one, if you haven't seen The Queen's Gambit, they'd go to Mexico City kind of around that time. And it's, it's a booming place. Like, check it out. It was really cool. Um, I did a little bit of research then about the Hawks and there's actually an interview that Moreno Garcia does with someone on YouTube where she's talking about the event that she based it off of. It was pretty interesting if you want to check that out additionally as well. I think this one is not going to be for everyone, as I said in my wrap up, but it is worth checking out. It's darker. Well, yeah, I would say it's darker and grittier than other things I've read of hers. Um, but for me, it definitely makes me want to pick up more of her books. I like that she shifts the in genre and I've been a fan of everyone so far. She's definitely become a must read author when her books come out for me. I've had a great time reading them and I hope she does a completely different genre next time. I'd be willing to see how she handles it. In general, she's a good writer. It's well written. The characters are well laid out. Um, yeah, the pacing, I would say, is actually, it is kind of a slow burn, but that's just based off of it being a noir book. Um, they don't tend to have tons of action. There's a lot more dialogue scenes, but when we do get action, I think it's worth it. Those are my thoughts on Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Definitely check it out. I would love to hear your thoughts about it because I think this one is pretty polarizing for people. I think that they were really expecting to love it, and I don't think that many people found it... Um, or I don't think that many people liked it as much as Mexican Gothic. So if you did like it, I would really like to hear about it. I'd also like to hear if you didn't and why. Um, but I've heard a lot more people dislike this one than people like it. Anyway, I'm Irene. You're watching Perpetually Paperback. And if you made it to the end of the video, as always, leave me a little emoji. Thanks, guys. Bye.